welcome to the video. Um, I'm currently editing the video and I realized um, while I did vlog, of course, my whole hospital stay, I did not really go into detail about how aspirin desensitization works, um, how they do it, um, the benefits, things like that. So I'm just going to briefly go over it. I am not a doctor. This is just my understanding of it, how it was explained to me by the doctors. I'm going to use non-medical terms because I'm going to say something wrong and I'm going to look so stupid. So this is just my understanding of it. Of course, if you have AERD and you're interested, talk to your doctors. They will be able to give you way more information than this video will. It'll just, this video is mostly to tell you how I reacted to the aspirin sensitization and how I understand it to how will work in the future. And I'm also going to do updates um, at six months and hopefully a year if I, if I see results by then or not. I'll let you guys know how that goes. So let's start with um, how does it work in the hospital? Basically, you check in. Um, the way my hospital works, they wanted to, me to be there by 8 and they were going to get me up to my room. And by 9 o'clock, we were going to start the aspirin desensitization. That did not happen. It took forever to get to my room, even though we got there at 7, like 40 or 7.50. Uh, we didn't get to my room um, till nine. So we didn't start till about 10 and every three hours they gave me aspirin. We started on a quarter of a pill of low dose aspirin and it doubled every three hours. Um, and then by 11 o'clock I took the 325 pill. That was my last pill for the day. I slept the night and then that morning I took the 650 and if I reacted well to that, I was able to go home and yeah, you'll see if that happened or not and my reaction to it in just a minute. And so I also want to talk about how it's supposed to work. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with AERD or maybe just got diagnosed or think you might have it, um, you know, obviously AERD stands for, stands for aspirin exasperated respiratory disease. Aspirin is a key component because your body cannot handle aspirin. Um, it is a respiratory disease. It affects your sinuses, your lungs, anything, because those are all connected. It affects all of it. And the way your body digests aspirin, it overreacts, and that's part, part of the disease. Even if you don't ingest aspirin, your body tends to overreact even without a cause. You can have flare-ups where you get very, very sick for no reason. You literally won't even have a virus or a cold. You won't have allergies, none of that. You'll just get extremely sick, and the polyps will grow very quickly. Um, and you have to constantly uh, treat those flare-ups as they come, which involves steroids, sometimes surgeries, antibiotics um, constantly, frequently. Um, before this, before being diagnosed, I would several times a year have um, uh, sinus infections and constantly get antibiotics, steroids, and it'd be at least 20 days of a steroid a month. And so I'd go maybe another month or two without it and then I'd need another round. And um, for those of you who don't know, um, taking steroids frequently is not good for you. Even antibiotics, it's not good for you. There's a lot of side effects long-term if you constantly have to take antibiotics and steroids. So once I got diagnosed, we talked. I talked to my doctors and we kind of all agreed the best course of action for me because of my age and how young I am would be aspirin desensitization. Since aspirin is a key component of this disease, um, by desensitizing you to aspirin, it's supposed to try and draw your body to handle things like a normal body would. <laughs> that being said, it does not get rid of your allergy to aspirin. I will always be allergic to aspirin. If I were to take another, another extra pill of aspirin, I could very easily go into anaphylactic shock. It's just, I'm always going to have that. It's not going to go away. So that's why I have to, oh, my phone's going off. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> That's why I have to take the aspirin um, two times a day. I will like, take two pills. They're both, each pill is 325. Take two pills two times a day. I do that every single day indefinitely until for whatever reason I need to stop or my allergist tells me not to. That's the plan as of now. Um, if I were to miss two days, I cannot take aspirin. I have to go back to the ICU and redo the desensitization because if I were to take it on that third or fourth day, I could very easily go into anaphylactic shock and die, which is not what we want to do. Um, I'm going to look up this thing. I have a statistic on here that I really want to talk about because it was very helpful. Um, and there it is. in giving information as far as like studies that have been done. This is a very small study on here, but it does give percentages that are frequently used by doctors. So that's why I chose it. Um, so let's talk about um, side effects. Obviously, aspirin is a blood thinner. So there are there are certain things with that that you got to look out for. It can cause, I think, ulcers in like your stomach lining, like upset stomachs. So if that happens, I just talk to my allergist and then he'll adjust my dosage accordingly. Um, now the positives of it. 
because I have the disease and it's very strongly associated with aspirin, of course, by taking it, it's supposed to try to make my body more normal. Um, so I have some numbers here. That's why I'm looking this way at my computer. Um, six months of aspirin desensitization, 61% of patients had improved symptoms. One year of aspirin desensitization, 87% of patients had improvement. 100% um, of seven AERD patients on a very low dose aspirin had pulps come back within a year. That's on a low dose aspirin. Of course, we all know now aspirin desensitization is a very high dose, 650 milligrams morning and night. 0% um, of patients on a high dose aspirin had the recurring polyps. Eight out of 10 non-desensitized AERD patients required revision surgery within two years. So those are people who did not have aspirin. Eight out of 10 of them had to have another polyp removal surgery. Eight, or sorry, zero out of five aspirin desensitized patients did. So within two years, people on a high dose aspirin did not need a recurring nasal polyp surgery. 20 AERD patients within six months on aspirin had reduced nasal congestion, reduced asthma, and some had a return sense of smell. That is huge because I was already starting to lose it before this. Um, it's kind of been the same. I'll let you know if it gets better. Um, it also says 91% who had been on a high dose aspirin found it effective, but 50% had never even undergone the aspirin desensitization. Of course, as I mentioned in my announcement video, I guess you can call it, um, my doctor said most people who have this are in their 40s um, who get diagnosed with it. Most people, so, my phone's going off, again, I'm so sorry. Um, most people who get diagnosed with this are in their 40s but have had started having symptoms in their 20s. I started getting symptoms in my 20s, got diagnosed when I was 24 because of how aggressive my AERD is. So. Uh, we felt this was uh, going to be the best option for me to at least try. I'm so young. I can try this. If it doesn't work, we'll look for other options. Um, other people in their 40s who maybe just have this now um, might feel like it's not, at least the way my doctor explained it to me, a lot of his patients don't even want to try it because it's a whole hospital stay. They got to take the aspirin. You got to take it every single day. Um, they're already 40. They um, would rather just keep going with their current treatment plan than go through this. So that's why, sorry, I keep my nose is running. So, so I keep touching my nose. So that's why a lot of people don't undergo it because they're usually a lot older and they can have other treatment methods that might be more effective for them. So it's very personal, but I'm, I was excited to try this. Um, my doctor, my ENT at least, was very excited for me to try it because uh, very few of his patients have done it. So I see him in like a week or two. So I'll talk to him about what happened, how it went, and like my experience so far. So that's kind of exciting. We did not do a lung function test at the hospital. We did a... Oh, I'll talk about it in the video. I'll, do, I'll show you. I'll show you in the video what, what we did. But yeah, that's um, why I did it. That's how you do it. And yeah, so go ahead and enjoy the video at my hospital stay and my experience with aspirin desensitization. Good morning. <laughs> I'm so tired. I can't make this look better. I'm just exhausted. It's currently like 4, 10, 4, 15-ish and I'm in the morning and I'm getting ready to go into the hospital. I'm so nervous this morning. I, it's finally kind of feeling real that I'm actually going into the hospital to do this. I never thought I would go to the hospital, hospital and willingly take aspirin. That just still that sounds crazy. So I'm going to do my nasal rinse take my medication and we're gonna go we're gonna head out and I'll see you guys in a second <laughs> in a couple hours it's currently 9 15 I'm checked in I'm in my room and I'm gonna give you a little tour while from my bed because I am hooked up to the monitor so I'll show you from my bed so that is the front door right there I got a nice TV with the remote a sink that is my toilet. I don't know why that's so funny. And then that is my view. That is a Scientology building. And then I got all my little stuff here. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited because I was very nervous that I was going to be here for a long time. And upon talking to the, the doctor, um, it sounds like on average it's only one night, which I was expecting like three nights, two to three nights. So. I know it's two to three days, but I was expecting I was going to be here longer. I haven't started the aspirin yet. We're going to be starting it probably within the next hour. And I'm starting on a quarter of a dose. So 
We'll see how it goes. So, about an hour ago, I took <clears throat> a quarter of an aspirin. So far, no reaction. So happy. Yay. Hoping it stays that way. Um, but we will see. We will see what happens. It's only been an hour. I've only taken a quarter. I must bring because the door is open. I'll keep you posted. Hi, it is currently 2 o'clock. I just had my second dose of aspirin. I took my first one at 11, so it's been three hours, and now on my second. My first one was a quarter of a baby aspirin. This time it's a half of a baby aspirin. And yeah, we'll see. I did have some mild reactions to the first one. Very, very mild. Like I um, had some, my sinuses were a little itchy. I was sneezing. Um, I had a runny nose, but it literally lasted like maybe like maybe a half hour, an hour. And then it went away. So yeah, I'm now on the half. We will see how I go. I also just had some lunch. I had some pizza and some broccoli and some carrots, some angel food cake. It was really yummy. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep on, keep on keeping. Then I played the Switch for a little bit, and I've been watching American Pickers because it's the only thing on my TV that gets signal. Everything else is like blurry, not really a good signal. But yeah, we did my peak flow, which is this little test that they do. You have to breathe into it. Um, my level when I came in was at 390, and it was at 400, so I'm just fine. In a half hour, we're gonna check it again, and make sure I'm all good. So I'll see you guys then. Bye. It's currently 5.30. I took a full baby aspirin at 5 o'clock. Currently don't have any reactions. My lip is fine. My breathing's fine. My peak flows from my little test have been perfect. So yeah, so far so good. This is way easier than I thought it was going to be. We'll see how it goes. I should get dinner in just a little bit here, and I'm very excited about it. It's currently 7.40, and I'm getting congested. Um, I definitely have a little bit of a sinus headache. I'm sneezing. Like, I'm having actual, like, allergy symptoms, but still, like, manageable. I mean, no swelling, no asthma attack, nothing like that. I'm getting nervous because at 8, I take two baby aspirins, 160 milligrams. <sighs> I'm getting nervous. I was told in the beginning, it's not uncommon for people to have one big reaction after a certain like allergy, like there's a hormone in your body or something, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about with that. But basically something builds up that causes the allergy symptoms and when it builds up you can have a huge reaction and then after that usually you don't have another reaction during the desensitization process so I kind of want the reaction now because I feel like if I get one later it's gonna be worse but I'm in the safest place possible it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay <laughs> currently 8:45. at about 8 8 30 I took 160 milligrams of aspirin took two baby aspirins and I'm feeling worse <laughs> I'm feeling very congested this whole side is like blocked. My face is a little um, red, but I usually get a little red when my sinuses are kind of inflamed. So I got some Benadryl. Hopefully that helps because I am miserable. <laughs> I'm miserable. Hoping this is the worst reaction I get. <laughs> so it is me again. Um, what should have been here is a clip of me talking about taking my 11 p.m. dose which was 325 milligrams. I did not film. The uh, Benadryl made me extremely drowsy and I very vaguely remember the nurse waking me up to take that dose. So yes, I did get my um, 11 p.m. dose. Good morning, it's currently 7.30. I actually took a bath, I guess you could say. Um, I have this soapy clean water with this in it. And I took I have still have some, but I took some clean rags and I like wiped, especially my face and my body. And yeah, I also had some other like 
stuff I could have used. I, that was fine enough for me. My face feels a way less oily. My hair is a disaster, but that's okay. Brush my teeth. I'm gonna put some lotion on. Hopefully I go home today. We will see. Fingers crossed. So I took a 650 at eight. And I'm good. It's 9.35, no reaction, no swelling, no coughing, nothing. I'm good. So I'm getting discharged, yay. So excited. And I'm home. So happy to be home. I got discharged. <laughs> At about 2 o'clock, a little before 2 is when we left, I went and got some food with my dad, we picked up Isaiah, got home, I've just been kind of sitting on the couch, so I'm so tired, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next video, bye bye!